Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 99, so let's get to it. Episode 99 begins in one of the locker rooms of Windom Stadium. Marnie is here waiting for her World Coronation Series battle to begin. And who will she be facing in said battle? Well, Ash, of course. Marnie says everyone is yelling for me. I have got to win this. Morpico adorably encourages Marnie, which makes Marnie smile ever so slightly, which is adorable as well. Now, what Marnie says here is a pun, because what she means to say is that everyone is cheering for her. Since said everyone is Team Yell, Marnie says that they are yelling instead of cheering. Now the screen in front of Marnie reveals that her battle with Ash will be one on one, which is both surprising and unsurprising. It's surprising because every other Ultra Class battle thus far has been 3 on 3, so back when it was revealed that Ash would battle Marnie, I assumed that the battle would be 3 on 3 as well. However, it is unsurprising because I knew that it would be difficult to have a 3 on 3 battle unless they dedicated more than one episode to the battle. Since the summary of episode 99 revealed that Ash and Go would go to Spike move first because of Team Yell, it was clear that the battle would only take up about half of the episode, which is not enough for a proper 3 on 3 battle, and it was clear that episodes 98 and 100 had nothing to do with Marnie's battle against Ash. Plus, the preview of episode 99 only showed Gengar and Grimmsnarl, therefore I realized that the battle would only be one on one, and it turns out that it is. The episode then cuts to Spike Muth. Ash and Go are here for Ash's battle with Marnie, but since the place looks less than inviting, Ash wonders if this really is the place where he will battle. Go says, well, this is where those Team Yell guys said we should go. There is then a flashback that shows that three members of Team Yell told Ash and Go that the battle would take place in Spike Muth, and not in Windom. Now, this is of course not a surprise since the summary of this episode did say that Team Yell would trick Ash and Go into going to the wrong place. Now, Ash still has his doubts even after Go reminds him of what Team Yell said. But Go then tells Ash that there is a gym here in Spike Muth, so the battle will surely be in the gym. This makes Ash happy. Ash and Go then head to the gym, and when they arrive, they find Pierce singing his heart out while having band practice with his Pokemon. Ash then says excuse me while running towards Pierce. This shocks Pierce and he has one of his toxicity attack Ash with discharge as a result. You know, so that Ash can be shocked too. But Pikachu uses Thunderbolt to intercept the discharge, which causes an explosion. Ash then exclaims hey, that's dangerous. And Pierce says that he is rehearsing right now, so no one is allowed to be here. Man, talk about taking your rehearsals too seriously. Go then says, isn't this supposed to be a gym? Pierce says that yes, it is, but that it is also their stage. He then introduces himself saying that he is the gym leader of the Spike Muth gym, that he is the dark type prodigy, and that they call him the sorrowful Pierce. He then introduces his band, Toxtricity Amped Form on guitar, Obstagoon on backup vocals, Toxtricity Loki Form on bass, and Rillobloom on drums. I love that just like a real band, each Pokemon does a small demonstration of what they do when they are introduced. I also like that they are assigned to roles that suit them. And I also love Ash and Pikachu's reaction here. They are just like, what is going on? Go on the other hand is not surprised at all and he simply uses his Pokedex on both Toxtricity. It is odd that he does not use his Pokedex on Obstagoon as well, since this is the first time that Go has seen one, just like it is the first time that he has seen a Toxtricity. So Pierce turns around and he walks back to the stage to continue rehearsing. He tells Ash and Go that the concert is in one hour, so they should come back then. But Ash introduces himself and he says that he is here for the World Coronation Series battle. Pierce stops, he turns around, and he says, Ash, the one from Tanto who is in the Ultra class? Ash is surprised, because Pierce knows about him, and Go says that Ash must be famous. Pierce then says that this is odd, because Marnie should already be waiting for Ash at Wyndham Stadium. This confuses Ash and Go. Go says that Team Yell said that the battle was here in Spikemuth, so Ash and Go realize that they were tricked. 
Pierce sighs and he says that Team Yell are his people and he apologizes for the trouble they caused. Ash then wonders who Marnie is and Pierce reveals that Marnie is his little sister, which shocks Ash. Go then notices that they are running out of time. The battle will begin soon. Ash starts to panic as a result and he wonders what he will do. Pierce gives Ash a helmet with goggles and he says I will take responsibility for what happened with Team Yell. So Ash and Pikachu get on this cool and sick motorcycle that Pierce has. Ash does comment that the motorcycle is cool and he also puts on the helmet and goggles he got from Pierce. And I love that Pikachu also gets to wear a helmet and goggles which is adorable. Go says that he and Grookey will catch up later so Ash should go on ahead. I have to say that having a motorcycle like this definitely suits Pierce. Pierce then says to Ash and Pikachu make sure you hold on tight, here we go, and he revs the engine. This makes you think that Pierce is going to drive like a madman at full speed, which is what you would expect from a hardcore punk rock vocalist like him. But instead, the episode cuts to the road to show that Pierce is driving at a leisurely slow pace, which is hilarious. A car even drives by slowly and a kid stares at Ash and Pikachu from the back seat. Said car then leaves Pierce, Ash and Pikachu behind, just to emphasize how slow Pierce is driving. I also love that there is such a contrast between the scene where Pierce revs the engine, which sounds very loud, and that there is even this badass music playing in the background. And the scene afterwards, when Pierce is driving, where there is no background music and the engine is barely audible. This contrast is what makes this so funny. <laughs> Ash wonders if Pierce can drive faster, but Pierce says that his motto is safety first, which totally goes against what you would expect from Pierce. Because again, someone that sings his heart out like this would surely drive such a cool and sick motorcycle like a speed demon. Though I guess that in the games, Pierce is for the most part pretty chill and laid back. So I guess that his driving does still match his personality. Once Wyndham Stadium is in view, Ash wonders what Team Yale is and Pierce reveals that they are Marnie's fans, which surprises Ash. Pierce explains that Team Yell used to be trainers of the Spike Muth Gym, and that they will use any trick they can think of if it is for Marnie's sake. Ash realizes that this is why Team Yell tricked him, but he then says that he would not mind battling at the Spike Muth Gym if he really had to. But Pierce says that Marnie cannot show her full potential at the Spike Muth Gym, because Spike Muth does not have a power spot, meaning that you cannot Dynamax in Spike Muth. So Ash wonders if Pierce does not use Dynamax and Pierce says that he does not and this is because he likes ordinary battles. However, because of the lack of a power spot, the Spike Move Gym does not get many challengers and the town itself ended up almost deserted over time as a result. Pierce then reveals that the reason why Marnie is participating in the World Coronation series is that she thinks that if she becomes the champion, then this will make Spike Muth famous and Spike Muth will be revitalized as a result. Pierce goes on to say that Marnie wants people to say that even Spike Muth has trainers as tough as her. He then says that Team Yell has the same goal as Marnie and that this should be his job instead, that he is hopeless because he is not doing anything to help Spike Muth. All of this leaves Ash in deep thought. Now none of this is surprising of course since it was to be expected that Marnie, Pierce and the Team Yell would all have the same storyline here in the anime that they have in the games, except that the World Coronation series replaces the gym challenge from the games. The episode then cuts to Wyndham Stadium, where the announcer says that the start time for the battle has come and gone and yet, Ash is nowhere to be seen. If he does not show up soon, then Marnie will win by default. Everyone from Team Yell is happy about this and they begin to chant, win by default, win by default, while Marnie is in the battlefield patiently waiting for Ash to arrive. The Rotom drone then approaches Marnie, I guess to say that she is the winner of the battle, but Marnie backs away and she exclaims that she does not want to win by default, she wants to have a right and proper battle, so she will wait for Ash forever if she has to, which is just admirable. 
I love that while Marnie really wants to win for the sake of her town and her fans, she does not want to win this honestly, or unfairly, or by any means necessary. Instead, she wants to win by playing fair and by having a true honest battle. I also love how she hugs and holds Morpico, which is adorable. The episode then cuts to the outside of the stadium where Pierce, Ash, and Pikachu arrive. Ash dismounts the motorcycle, he puts his cap on, he thanks Pierce, and he runs towards the stadium. Pierce is shown to be smiling here, which means that he is happy that he was able to help Ash. Back inside the stadium, the doors behind Marnie open, and Ash runs in, exclaiming that he is sorry for being late. Now Team Yell are surprised, because Ash was able to get to the stadium in the end, and they express how annoyed they are because of Ash's arrival. Marnie says to Ash, you took your time, and Ash apologizes again, this time with more heart. But a member of Team Yell berates Ash for making Marnie wait, by saying how dare you make our lady wait. And he says that Ash is already done for. But Ash snaps back at the guy saying you really want to go there after you went and tricked me? And I love that Pikachu's like, yeah, that's right, you fools. Now Marnie is shocked when she hears that Team Yell tricked Ash. Another member of Team Yell then says that Ash has no right to battle. And another member says that this is true, that their lady will win by default. This angers Marnie who tells Team Yell to shut their gobs. Which shocks Team Yell. Marnie then wonders if Team Yell really tricked Ash. Ash says that yes, they did. They told them that the battle was taking place somewhere else, but thankfully, Pierce drove him here. Marnie is surprised when she hears that her brother helped Ash. The member of Team Yell that berated Ash first, then exclaims that they just wanted the dirt lady to win, because a victory for her is a victory for Spikemuth. But Marnie exclaims that winning like this is not a victory for anyone, which leaves Team Yell in shock once again. Pierce then enters the stands where Team Yell are sitting, which surprises Marnie and the Team Yell. Pierce then screams with his microphone that Marnie should give her all in the battle. Pierce is then shown on the stadium's big screen, and the announcer points out that Marnie's brother, who is also the gym leader of Spikemuth, is here to cheer her on. More Pico and Pikachu then jump down so that they can inspect each other, and they seem to conclude that the other is nice, since they both smile. This is an adorable little exchange. Also, I have to say that after only seeing James's Morpico for so long, it is weird to see a Morpico that is so well behaved. Marnie then tells Ash that she has a lot at stake in this battle, so she cannot afford it to lose. Ash says that he knows that she wants to revitalize Spikemuth, because Pierce told him. And Marnie confirms that this is true. Ash then says that he has come a long way to get here, so he can't lose either. Marnie then tells Ash to take his place on the opposite side of the battlefield, because everyone is waiting for them. Ash says that he is looking forward to the battle, and he makes his way to his side of the battlefield. Meanwhile, Go finally arrives at the stadium, and coincidentally he enters the stands where Pierce and the Team Yell are at. Pierce congratulates Go for making it here, and Go reveals that he only made it because of a Corby Knight taxi. Go then says, Ash, you gotta win this. So, with Ash finally here and in position, the battle can finally begin. The announcer first introduces Marnie and Ash, starting with Marnie. The announcer reveals Marnie's rank, which is 29. This is 7 higher than Ash's rank of 36, and it is a high rank. And it is interesting that while it is higher than B's rank before losing to Ash, it is lower than Bogner's rank before he lost to Ash. Meaning that Ash's first opponent in the Ultra class had a higher rank than his second and third opponents, which is not what you would expect. So Team Yell cheer for Marnie after she is introduced, which shocks Go, who wonders if they are Marnie's fan club. And Pierce says that yeah, something like that. The announcer then introduces Ash, saying that he is on a winning streak after defeating B recently. Now, while Go and the Grookey cheer for Ash, Team Yell instead says that they can already see it. The moment when Ash loses and the moment when he cries as a result. Ash and Marnie then take out their Pokeballs, ready to send out their Pokemon at the same time. It is cool that just like in the games, Marnie keeps her Pokemon inside the Dusk Balls, which is the type of Pokeball that suits her the best. And so, Marnie sends out her Pokemon, and Ash does the same thing. 
Marnie's choice is Grimmsnarl, while Ash's choice is Gengar. No surprises here, of course. Go uses his Pokedex on Grimmsnarl just like he did with the two Toxtricity and unlike he did with Obstagoon, meaning that Obstagoon is the only one of the three Pokemon that are appearing in the anime for the first time in this episode that does not get a Pokedex entry. Pierce then reveals to Go that Grimmsnarl is Marnie's ace. And Go responds by saying that Gengar got a huge power boost recently. And the Grookey is like, yeah, that's right. Ash then says to Gengar, I am counting on you, and I love that Gengar flexes like, no worries bro, I got this. Marnie says that if she wants to be champion, then she must defeat Ash. So, she is hitting Ash with everything she has, and Grimmsnarl gets into a fighting stance. Like, that's right, here we go. I love that we then get a cool image of Marnie, Grimmsnarl, Ash, and Gengar just before the commercial break. It really gets you hyped up for the start of the battle when the episode resumes. And so, the battle finally begins. Marnie makes the first move. She tells Grimmsnarl to use Spirit Break, one of Grimmsnarl's signature moves. Ash counters by telling Gengar to use Dazzling Gleam, which is a new move for Gengar. But this is not a surprise. It was actually revealed months ago in an hour-long special episode that Gengar would learn Dazzling Gleam at some point. Now, I did not watch this special episode, but some subscribers did tell me about Gengar and Dazzling Gleam. Therefore, I knew that Gengar would use the move at some point. It is surprising though that it took this long for it to happen, considering that the special episode aired almost 8 months prior to the airing of episode 99. So Gengar fires off the Dazzling Gleam, but Grimmsnarl runs straight through it, powering through the attack while still wielding Spirit Break. Not an easy feat for a Pokemon weak to fairy, so Grimmsnarl is strong for sure. Grimmsnarl then jumps in order to hit Gengar in midair with Spirit Break, but Gengar avoids the attack. This frustrates Marnie and it hilariously scares Team Yell. Gengar then uses Ice Punch to land a clean hit on the still airborne Grimmsnarl, who falls straight down and he crashes into the ground. Ash decides to end the match here and he calls for Shadow Ball. Gengar charges Grimmsnarl with Shadow Ball in hand. But Marnie says to Grimmsnarl, use that. Grimmsnarl bows before Gengar, which makes Gengar pause mid-attack. Like, what is going on? Marnie then calls for False Surrender, another one of Grimmsnarl's signature moves, which lands a clean, super effective hit on Gengar. Marnie then simply says, right on target. And the team yell cheers. Pierce reveals to Go that False Surrender is the special move of Marnie and the Grimmsnarl, but that this is not all there is to the strength that Marnie has. Marnie then reveals her Dynamax Band in this moment, showing what Pierce means when he says that there is more to Marnie. Pierce then says that he sees that Ash has a Dynamax Band as well, and so Pierce wonders who will use their Dynamax Band first. And it turns out that Marnie will use it first. She withdraws Grimmsnarl and I love that Gengar takes a step back. Like, oh dear, here it comes. Marnie's Dusk Ball then grows and she says that while her brother might not use it, if it helps her win, then she will use it, referring to the Dynamax Band. She then throws her giant Dusk Ball into the air and from it, Gigantamax Grimmsnarl emerges ready to rumble. I love that Team Yell screams that Gigantamax is the best. Pierce then tells Go that Marnie specializes in Dynamax battles, the one thing you can't do at the Spike Muth Gym. He goes on to say that Marnie has her own way of battling, that he and Marnie should just do what they can to help Spike Muth, each in their own way. So Ash and Gengar are faced with Gigantamax Grimmsnarl, and I thought that Ash would Gigantamax Gengar right away in response, but surprisingly, he does not. Martin then calls for G-Max Snooze, Grimmsnarl's G-Max move, which Grimmsnarl fires at Gengar who uses Dazzling Gleam as a shield in an attempt to block the G-Max Snooze. Pierce sees this and he says, oh I see, I guess that he is thinking will that happen? And Go says that Ash's battles are always crazy. Gengar does its best to withstand the G-Max Snooze, but Gengar is ultimately overpowered and hit with G-Max Snooze. However, Gengar is still standing, but G-Max Snooze's secondary effect leaves Gengar drowsy, 
but just as Gengar is about to fall asleep, it hilariously stretches the sides of its face, which allows it to stay awake. I love that the announcer screams here that Gengar is cute for doing this. Marnie, however, is shocked that Gengar did not fall asleep. And she says, Morpico, is that even possible? And Morpico is like, well, I guess it is, which is adorable. Morpico then seems to cheer for Ash and Gengar because they did something unbelievable. While Marnie says that Ash and Gengar might prove to be at least a little interesting. Ash then calls for Sludge Bomb, another new move for Gengar. This one, however, is a surprise unlike Dazzling Gleam. Also, since Gengar used Dazzling Gleam, Ice Punch, and Shadow Ball already, this means that Gengar no longer knows Psychic, which is a shame, since Psychic is a cool move, and it no longer knows Nightshade, which is a good change since Gengar did not need Nightshade since it knows Shadow Ball. While I am sad to see Psychic go, Gengar's new moveset is better than the previous one, because it does not have more than one move of the same type, and it has one move of each of Gengar's types for two stab options of different types. Also, back when it was revealed that Gengar would learn Dazzling Gleam, it was also revealed that Gengar would replace Psychic with Dazzling Gleam. Now, I was against this because, like I said, Nightshade is the move that deserved to go. Thankfully, while Psychic was indeed replaced with Dazzling Gleam, at least Nightshade was replaced as well. And by Sludge Bomb at that, which is a nice addition to Gengar's moveset. So, Gengar confuses Grimmsnarl by facing in and out of the shadows. A classic Gengar strategy. Like trying to swat a fly, Grimmsnarl tries to hit Gengar, but it cannot. Marnie then calls for Max Quake. Grimmsnarl roars and the ground shatters, sending a bunch of rocks towards Gengar, who is hit in midair. Another super effective hit. But Gengar endures the hit, and it still fires off the Sludge Bomb attack. But Grimmsnarl easily blocks it with one hand. Ash wonders if Gengar is okay, and Gengar says that it is, though Gengar does look hurt. Ash then decides that it's time for them to use Gigantamax too. So he withdraws Gengar back into its Pokeball. The Pokeball then grows, and Ash throws it. And from the Pokeball, Gigantamax Gengar emerges, and... I could just feel my excitement for the battle growing when I saw this, because not only is it epic, but the music that goes with it is just amazing. And the same can be said of Gengar's earth shattering and deep roar. So this moment just gave me goosebumps. The episode then cuts to Alistair's gym to show that Alistair is watching the battle on his phone. Since Gengar just gigantamaxed, this is the perfect moment to show Alistair. And it is clear that Alistair is smiling. Marnie is happy that Gengar gigantamaxed, and she says that this is how it should be. And I agree, the battle of giants can now begin. Gengar starts with a max ooze, which causes an overflow of poison from Gengar. Grimmsnarl counters with Max Starfall, which clashes with the Max Ooze, and this causes a massive explosion that shakes the stadium and everyone in it. Once the smoke clears, Grimmsnarl returns to its normal size, because his time in his Gigantamax form runs out. It's worth noting that in the games, Dynamax and Gigantamax have a duration of 3 turns, and Grimmsnarl did indeed use 3 moves, which are 3 turns, in his Gigantamax form before reverting to normal. So the anime is true to the games here. Now I want to go back and count the number of moves used by other Pokemon that have Gigantamaxed or Dynamaxed in the anime, because I was under the impression that in the anime, Dynamax and Gigantamax had no time limit. Because most of the Pokemon that have Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed in the anime only returned to normal when the battle was over. Meaning that they were knocked out or that they won. This is what happened with Ash's Pikachu, Leon's Charizard, Raihan's Duraludon, Lance's Gyarados, Ghost Raboot, and the Gigantamax Garbodor used by the Macrocosmos henchmen in episodes 43 and 44. While Opal's Alchemy returned to normal off screen after the battle ended. I did go back to count the moves used by Beast Machamp when it was Gigantamaxed. 
Machamp is the only other Pokemon to return to normal before the battle was over. And Machamp did indeed use three moves before returning to normal. So maybe the anime does follow the games fully when it comes to Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. And perhaps previous battles ended before the Pokemon could use three moves. Which is why it felt like the end of the battle is what made them return to normal. Now I did go back to episodes 43 and 44 because I forgot about Ghost Raboot and Garbodor when counting the Pokemon that have Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed in the anime thus far. Raboot and Garbodor both returned to normal when the battle was over. However, they did use three moves each, meaning that they still did match the move slash turn limit in the end. Judging by all the evidence I have talked about thus far, I will assume that every Dynamax battle in the anime has been faithful to the games. It's just that I did not think about counting the number of moves used before, or the battles ended before one or both of the Pokemon could use three moves. So, seeing that they now have the advantage, Ash calls for Max Hailstorm. Gengar generates the Ice Cloud and... I love that the chunks of ice rain down from outside the stadium. Grimmsnarl is unfazed by this, however, since he runs straight towards Gengar while avoiding the Max Hailstorm. He then jumps and he uses Spirit Break to hit Gengar. Now, I do admit that I was a little worried here that Gengar would get trashed even in its Gigantamax form. Ash exclaims that Grimmsnarl is strong, while Marnie says sorry, but the winner here will be me, and she calls for Darkest Lariat. And Grimmsnarl charges towards Gengar. Ash counters by calling for G-Max Terror, Gengar's G-Max move. Gengar fires off the G-Max Terror, but Grimmsnarl cuts through the attack with Darkest Lariat. Team Yell cry when they see this, and they happily exclaim, Our Lady! Marnie says that's the end of Gengar's Gigantamax, and she tells Grimmsnarl to charge in. G-Max Terror was the third move that Gengar used while in its Gigantamax form, so Marnie is right. Gengar is about to return to normal. And this shows that the characters are aware of the time limit Gigantamax and Dynamax have. So Grimmsnarl charges Gengar with Darkest Lariat, but Ash tells Gengar to swallow Grimmsnarl, and... Gengar straight up just eats Grimmsnarl, taking advantage of its giant mouth, which shocks Marnie and Morpico. Gengar then returns to normal as expected, and it still has Grimmsnarl in its mouth. Gengar then spits out poor Grimmsnarl, who falls flat on his back, though he soon sits up. Go mentions that it's incredible how Ash did not leave Gengar defenseless while the Gigantamax wore off. And Pierce says that Ash is quite good. Marnie then calls for Stomping Tantrum, and Grimmsnarl begins stomping the ground. Pierce mentions that Stomping Tantrum is stronger if your previous move missed. And I suppose that Darkest Lariat did miss, kind of. Gengar counters Stomping Tantrum with Shadow Ball, and the Shadow Ball cuts through the Stomping Tantrum, and it scores a direct hit on Grimmsnarl, which causes a massive explosion. When the smoke clears, Grimmsnarl is still conscious. But he looks at Marnie and he says something. My guess is that he says something along the lines of, I'm sorry. Since Grimmsnarl then falls and he is knocked out. Meaning that Ash and Gengar are the winners. Ash and the Pikachu are of course happy because Ash is the winner. Go and the Grookey are also happy because of this. Team Yell, however, is of course not happy. And they cry while screaming, Our Lady! Pierce smiles, however, even though his little sister just lost. But maybe he is just happy because he got to see an amazing battle and or because he knows that Marnie did her best and that she will surely grow from this experience. Ash and the Pikachu then happily embrace Gengar, who is clearly exhausted from the battle, which is understandable. While Marnie pets Grimmsnarl, and she says that Grimmsnarl did great. The crowd then cheers for both Marnie and Grimmsnarl, which surprises them since they lost, and yet, the crowd still cheers for them. The big screen of the stadium then reveals Ash's new rank, 15, which is just 7 away from the Master Class, meaning that Ash only has one more battle left in the Ultra Class before he enters the Master Class. Or he might even need to battle someone in the Master Class next, so that he can take their place among the Masters 8. In any case, Ash's next World Coronation Series battle will surely be amazing. 
The episode then cuts to the outside of the stadium. Marnie says that Gengar was strong, while Ash says that Grimmsnarl was strong too. Ash adds that he was constantly sweating throughout the match because of how strong Marnie and Grimmsnarl are. I love that this makes Gengar laugh. I guess that Gengar either agrees with Ash, or Gengar thinks that it's funny that Ash had such a difficult time during the battle. Or perhaps Gengar just had a lot of fun during the battle. Pierce then tells Marnie that she has gotten stronger, and that she should let out her frustrations during their next concert. And Marnie says yes to this. The main three team yell grunts then approach Marnie in tears, saying that she was great, and that all the people that were enthralled by her performance in the battle want to visit Spikemuth, and that this will surely revive the town. Pierce tells Marnie that she succeeded and that she should give the team yell grunts a bigger smile. At this point I was like, oh my god, Marnie is going to smile in the anime. This should be amazing. But then she turns around to smile. This makes the team yell grunts understandably very happy. But we the audience cannot see Marnie's face here. So I was ready to be disappointed because I would not get to see Marnie smile in the anime. However, thankfully, Marnie turns around to reveal her beautiful smile, which she makes by pushing her cheeks with her fingers. This is absolutely adorable. And she does do this in the games as well. In the anime, it's even better, however, because she talks to Ash like this, which is just so cute. Definitely one of the most adorable things I have ever seen. Marnie thanks Ash for the battle, and she then says that she won't give up. Ash says let's both do our best and they both shake hands. The episode ends with the narrator saying that the masterclass is just up ahead for Ash, and they show the four members of the Masters 8 that have been revealed as of this episode. I wonder which of them Ash will battle first. So overall this was an amazing episode. I am a bit disappointed because the battle was one on one instead of three on three, which means that it was less dynamic than the previous ultra class battles, but it was still a great battle regardless. I love that it was different than previous Dynamax slash Gigantamax battles, which were all about having both Pokemon battle normally first, and then have them both Dynamax slash Gigantamax at the same time so that they can have an epic battle of giants until one of them falls. However, Ash vs. Marnie was instead about having both Pokemon fight normally first, while waiting to see who would jump the gun first, by Gigantamaxing their Pokemon first. Marnie went first, and Ash opted to instead save his Gigantamax for later, which was a big gamble since Gengar had to face Gigantamax Grimmsnarl without any tricks. So David vs Goliath Pokemon Edition again, like with Machamp vs Lucario, except that Lucario at least had Mega Evolution on its side. After enduring a battle against a giant, Ash finally had a Gengar Gigantamax so that Gengar could contend more easily with Gigantamax Grimmsnarl, knowing full well that Grimmsnarl would return to normal soon, which would then give Ash and Gengar the advantage. They could then turn the tables. The battle would still be David vs Goliath Pokemon Edition, but Ash and Gengar would be Goliath this time instead. And in the end, after both Pokemon exhausted their Gigantamax, they had to settle the battle the old fashioned way. So this was a different kind of battle and I loved it because of it. It really did exemplify the strategic nature of using Dynamax slash Gigantamax in the games. Use it too early and it might run out before you can settle the battle, and you might have to face your opponent's own Dynamax slash Gigantamax without having yours to counter theirs. Use it too late however and the battle might be too far away from your grasp already, and Dynamax slash Gigantamax can't save you. It might be too late to turn the tables. The battle between Marnie and Ash really was amazing because of how well it was able to exemplify the strategic nature of Dynamax slash Gigantamax in the games. But even without this the battle was well animated and it was pretty well choreographed as well, with some great moments as each Pokemon had to play both David and Goliath. My only gripe is that we could not see the two Gigantamax Pokemon fighting each other for longer. But again, this battle tried to be different and it succeeded. 
It was also a great battle because we got to see Ash's Gengar use Gigantamax in an actual battle. And Gengar even used two new moves, and it won. It finally won, which is what Gengar desperately needed to do. Even though unfortunately it was at the cost of seeing Marnie lose. Beyond the battle, it was just so good to see both Marnie and Pierce in the anime. Marnie looked simply amazing throughout the episode and she was just so cool, adorable, strong, earnest and endearing, while Pierce was just so funny, eccentric, cool, kind and dynamic. They really are two of my favorite characters from Pokemon Sword and Shield and I am glad that the anime did them justice. I really do hope that we get to see them again in the anime someday. So yeah, overall I really loved this episode. It was truly an amazing, breathtaking and magnificent episode. But that's the video, as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.